Have you ever heard that success leaves clues? Well, if you have aspirations to one day be a first generation cash flow millionaire, well, why don't we learn from a trillionaire? Because he wrote it down in a book. What book? The book is here located in the Bible. What? Well, let's discuss it. Let's unpack it together here in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here. Hail him to you from the Money Smart Home Office here in Chicago land area, home of the Seven Figure Squad. And uh, listen, I just want to disclaim to you guys, just like we did last Sunday, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a minister, I'm just an entrepreneur, just trying to find his way in the best way possible. And I've referenced the Bible in so many different ways. Yes, one more time, the Bible. What? Listen, when I was growing up, I never thought in a million years I'd ever use a Bible as a reference value to make money or how to make money. But listen, it's unpacked a lot of things in my life in terms of how to gain wealth, how to gain happiness, and more importantly, prosperity and creating generational wealth. And uh, if you haven't watched this episode yet of last Sunday of the Parable of the Talents, I suggest you consider watching this because I shared about your ability to increase your understanding of money and what to do with money instead of operating in fear in, t in terms of operating now in faith. That's what that Bible study was about. So this Sunday, I want to share with you a guy who's considered the richest man who ever lived. Yes, even to this day, he would be con still considered the richest man who ever lived. Who am I talking about? Well, have you ever heard of the story in the Bible called uh, David and Goliath, right? The big, the big uh, giant against the small shepherd boy and the shepherd boy takes his and this takes his, uh, what do you call that, slingshot, and he kills the giant, slays the giant. Well, that guy was named David. That guy was David. He slayed the giant of the Philistines. He killed uh, Goliath. And anyway, make a long story short, he had a son. And uh, the Lord said, listen, I'm not going to bless you because of your sin with Bathsheba, but I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your son, Solomon. What? Anyway, shortly before David died, he installed his son Solomon to be the king of Israel. It's in 1 Kings in third chapter. And King Solomon's like, okay, now his father passed away, David passed away, now he's the king of Israel. He's in charge of this kingdom. You are in charge at 12 years old of this, of this nation. Can imagine your feeling. Imagine you putting yourself in that position. Anyway, make a long story short, he's having a conversation with God. God asked him, Solomon, what do you want? Pray for something I'll give to you. By the way, I'm just paraphrasing here. And uh, anyway, Solomon says, well, geez, I want to make sure I rule right he says, Lord, give me wisdom and understanding. And God says, like, what? Are you kidding me? Yes, wisdom and understanding. He says, dang, Solomon, that's pretty good. He says, not only will I give you wisdom and understanding beyond your belief, especially at the age of 12 years old, but I'm going to give you everything that you didn't pray for. What are you talking about? Countries, land, armies, and in this case, wealth. And it's projected that based on his wealth, how rich really was King Solomon? Well, if you add up all the things that's mentioned about him in the Bible, he'd be considered a 2.2 trillionaire in today's dollars based on his wealth. He, uh, I believe, had a, 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 a tribute fortune every year based on tribute from different countries, $40 billion a year of tribute to Israel, and not only did he gain wisdom and everything that God blessed him with, but the people of Israel was taken through a golden age of wealth, happiness, and prosperity because of the obedience of King Solomon. Now, we're looking at King Solomon. He prayed for wisdom and understanding. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you, if you ever thought about becoming financially free, financially independent, if you ever thought about saying, you know what, I'm watching the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel because I want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire. Well, I'm going to point you to a book that I didn't write, but King Solomon wrote. I mean, these things that you read in this, in this book, and I want to point you specifically to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. It's after Psalms. Everybody reads Psalms because it's the songs, it's the hymns. But the book right after that is a book called Proverbs. And it's the, I call, I call it the OG memes, the OG one-liners, the OG statements that just punch you upside the head with one sentence based on this wisdom that is uh, documented here in the Bible. And one of the things that King Solomon says is, if you want to get wealthy, you want to have happiness, well, number one, you better operate in diligence. What does that mean? Work with diligence. So let's go over the scripture real quick. In Proverbs 22, verse 29, it says this, Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Check this out. If you're looking to skill up your game, 
Skill up your game in terms of how you make money, especially in this year of 2020 during the pandemic where everybody's skills are challenged. Can you make money in the recession? Can you make money through the pandemic? Your skills are being challenged right now. And if you're diligent in adapting, adjusting, and pivoting, and continue to increase based on your ability to improve and adapt, you are considered diligent. And if you are diligent, you will be serving amongst kings. People will be asking you for your help. And I'm talking about not just the president of the United States, if that's what you think, but in my opinion, there's other kings here in the United States of America, people that run businesses, CEOs, VPs, directors of other companies, people that have transitioned from one business to another, or one career from another. In my opinion, those are kings. You're a king. And if you're a king looking for help, you want to seek somebody that is operating with diligence. Those folks, if I'm looking for somebody to help me with my consulting business, I want to make sure that person, that consultant, that person that I'm hiring, I want to make sure that they're diligent in the work. Anybody that works for me, anybody that gets a check for me, I want to make sure that they're operating with diligence. And if so, guess what? They'll be sitting amongst kings. The second thing, if you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, avoid laziness. Proverbs says avoid laziness. So let's define what laziness means. It's four different areas here of definition of laziness. So let's look at Proverbs 21, verse 2. All a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. You know, uh, Ray Dalio, who wrote the book Principles, he says, listen, I walk into a room thinking that I'm wrong. Because I want to know from the people that have been there, done that, I want people that have thoughts and solutions and ideas and experience. I want to learn from them too as well. He says, I also want to walk into a room thinking that I'm wrong and I prove myself right because he's not walking in there self-centered. Whatever you're doing, I hope that you have a process or demeanor about you according to scripture that says, according to Proverbs, that says, listen, don't be so self-centered. I know that you have a self-interest. I know you have an agenda, but are you there to help others first? Which leads me to number two. Are you operating with arrogance? Let's talk about what arrogance means here in chapter 26, verse 16. It says, the sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who answer discreetly. So in other words, this guy's arrogant. He's like, dude, I'm working, man. I'm working. I'm working. Dude, I'm working. I'm busting my tail. I'm busting my tail. But other people are like, yo, he thinks he's working. <laughs> he thinks he's actually putting in the effort. Based on his numbers, based on the leader's bulletin, I don't think he's working at all. I mean, did you see his numbers? Did you see his performance? Did you see the amount of uh, revenues brought in based on the effort he's putting in? He thinks he's working, but he's working hard at the wrong things. But they're discreetly saying that about them. But the guy who is arrogant saying, listen, I got this, man. I got this. Hey, that's arrogance kicking in. That's arrogant. And what is arrogance? Arrogance is another embodiment of laziness, which leads us into number three, number four combined together. Ignorance and irresponsibility. You don't want this I and I working against you. Ignorance and irresponsibility. Let's take a look at this. Proverbs 24, verses 30 to 31. It says, I went past the field of a sluggard past the vineyard of the man who lacks judgment. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds, and the stone wall was in ruins. So in other words, somebody had property, somebody had land, somebody had things growing. They didn't take care of it. They acted with ignorance and responsibility. You know, oftentimes, uh, 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 I, I shared a story when I was coming up in business. I said, you know what? Man, if I ever have a Mercedes-Benz one day, if I ever have a BMW one day, if I ever have a luxury car one day, if I ever have a car one day, I'm going to take care of it, man. I'm going to take care of it. Next thing you know, I owned one. I got one. And that thing was getting dirty all the time. And I told, I told myself, you know, <laughs> I'm saying I'm going to take care of this, but shoot, it's raining all the time. But guess what I told myself? I cannot operate in ignorance and responsibility. I said I was going to do something. I need to make sure I follow through with my word. And so if you are blessed with something, you're blessed with a business, you're blessed with real estate, you're blessed with a family, you're blessed with people that work with you and for you, do not operate with ignorance and responsibility. Otherwise, thorns come in, you're going to be scratched, you're going to be in pain, you're going to be hurt, and you're going to wonder why things aren't working right. Why? Because it's another embodiment of laziness. I know, it's pretty tough to hear that, but hey, I'm not saying this. This is what Scripture is saying from the richest man and the richest king whoever lived. Let's move on to the third one. Counsel. What do you mean counsel? So if I want to grow a business, I want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire. What does counsel mean? Let's look at Proverbs 15 verse 22. It says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Remember last Sunday I said, I can't be the only person that says I'm doing a good job. Why? Because I cannot see the picture when I'm inside the frame. I need advisors. I need counsel. I need somebody to hold myself accountable to 
So therefore, I'm not operating in laziness. So oftentimes you say, I want to do something well. I want to go out and set out in this endeavor and be successful at it. But if you're not seeking counsel, you're not seeking outside help. You're not saying, hey, who can advise me and guide me? Matter of fact, my mentor, Patrick Ben David, he had an advisory board for his company. And he's asked his pastor, Pastor Dudley Rutherford, can you please be on my advisory board? I go to your church, but I need you to counsel me to make sure I operate my business in the best way possible and the best way possible in terms of the stewardship of the finances I've saved to fund this company and the operation of making sure I'm leading the people that has entrusted me with making a decision to work with me. And says, no problem. And make a long story short, funny thing is, this same pastor also knew my sister. And when I came to visit my sister, this pastor said, hey, I think you need to meet the Iranian version of you. He says, what? And then he says to Patrick but David, he says, hey, I think you need to meet the Filipino version of you. What? <laughs> and based on this counsel, both Patrick and I, we were introduced together and we hit it off and we're creating something special in the business today. And when we're looking at his YouTube channel, when we're looking at what he's doing, we're looking at the progress of the people that we're coaching, the fact that we've paid in this pandemic year of 2020, the people that we're coaching and people that we're mentoring, people that we're guiding in business, over $9 million in cash flow and commissions and payroll paid out to them, that people weren't asking for a stimulus check, people weren't asking for a PPP loan, people weren't asking for uh, unemployment checks. Why? Because people were diligent in their work. I'm so proud of these people that we're working with. I'm so proud of the people that in embodied and engaged counsel systems process. Why? Because they also sought counsel. They said, you know what? Hey, listen, my job, my career, my endeavor is not getting me to where I want to go. And I need counsel. I need to get truthful with where I am today. I need to be honest and truthful with where I am today. Look at myself in this mirror. And if I do not like the reflection that looks at me back, I need counsel. I need change. And that's what these people did. And if you want that in your life, you got to have people that counsel you and advise you. And you got to be able to say, hey, I may not like what they have to say, but they're counseling me and advising me in the direction to help me get to where I want to go. The question for you is not only will you obtain counsel and seek advice, but are you willing to take it? If you seek counsel and you seek advice, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. You're going to see a whole lot further. And that's what advice, good counsel will do for you. And last but not least, if you're planning on 2021 being the greatest year for you ever to have a financial breakthrough that you never thought you'd ever accomplish, you're following diligence, you're following avoiding laziness, you're seeking counsel, and you finally found a blueprint, you finally found a strategy, you finally found some things that you have to do. This, you might not like this one, but you gotta apply discipline. Apply discipline. Of all the things that you've found to help you with your budget, to help you with your business, to help you with expanding your growth in your business, you gotta apply this thing called discipline, which a lot of people, that's a word that a lot of people don't like. Well, let's break it down. Here in Proverbs 15, verse 32, it says this. He who ignores discipline despises himself, but whoever heeds correction gains understanding. Let me continue here. Verse 33, it says, The fear of the Lord teaches the man wisdom, and humility comes before honor. I just expanded to the ver verse 33 on that one. I thought it was a natural follow-up to this. But listen, discipline, whether it's your, your finances, your fitness, exercising faith over fear, it's going to require discipline. If you apply discipline, it says because you love yourself. And that's not being self-centered because you can't give what you ain't got. But if you apply discipline, you're going to be a better version of you. You may not like it. You might like the reflection you see in the mirror. You may not like this counsel. You may not like the fact that somebody called you out or actually called you up. They care about you. If there's actually wise counsel that you're seeing versus a hater or somebody that's silently has their own agenda against you. But if you're seeking counsel and you have to apply discipline, well, guess what? According to scripture, according to Proverbs, it says it's going to bless you immensely because if you heed correction, then you will gain understanding. And when you gain understanding, you know what to do. You can apply. And guess what? Possibly the breakthrough that you've been looking for. As I wrap stuff up, make sure you check out this video here, which is a story of the parable of the talents, which is a story that absolutely changed my life. And then you start thinking like a millionaire, because that's part of this YouTube channel, right? Think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, and so therefore you can become a first generation millionaire. So please watch this video right here. And also, I want you, I want to prepare you, either yourself or the people you love and care about, your family, your, your spouse, your children, because you decide to adopt some of these things, and if nobody in your family's ever 
experienced this before, guess what? You're going to deal with pressure and you're going to learn how to deal with your family. So please watch this video too as well. So therefore you learn and get skills. So therefore you can handle the pressure and deal with the stress that may come along with this adjustment process. And as you continue along this journey, there's going to be a lot of people that may not agree with what you're doing because you're rising up. But if you're being diligent, not being lazy, you're seeking wise counsel for people that aren't where you want to be. You're applying discipline. You're applying discipline every day to get there. Every day to get there because you're wrapping all this stuff up all together. Well, guess what? You're going to have to learn how to deal with other people that may not be used to the version of you that continues to show up and reveal itself. So with that being said, guys, I appreciate your time and attention. Yes, every Sunday during Vlogmas of 2020, I'll be sharing with you some of the things from the Bible. And you know, next week, I'm definitely going to continue with more stories from the book of Proverbs considered the richest man who ever lived, written by King Solomon. Also, the other book, Ecclesiastes, which is another great book too as well. I'm going to share with you next Sunday as we complete Vlogmas of 2023 Bible studies, financial Bible studies, entrepreneur Bible studies of scripture that inspired me to become the next best version of myself so I can be a greater blessing to the people that I love and care about. And I hope you do too as well. By the way, we got a lot of people from the faith-based community that says, God don't want you to be rich. God don't want you to be wealthy. We got to disagree with you, man. I got to disagree with you respectfully, kindly, respectfully. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, God has given you the power to create wealth because life, God wants you to give you life and life more abundantly. That being said, guys, I have a comment contest before we finish. Here's a comment contest in a comment section below because we're going to give you a shirt here from the Seven Figure Squad store, merchandise store. We're going to give you the top three people who respond to this. We're going to pick out a comment here randomly. The three people from either a YouTube channel or a Facebook page by dropping in the comment section below the answer to this question. My favorite proverb of building wealth is, based on what we just talked about in this video, my favorite proverb of building wealth is, drop it in the comment section below, the top three people will select from both our Facebook page and YouTube page, and you'll get a shirt, first generation cash flow millionaire from our seven figure squad merchandise store. That being said, guys, again, please drop your thoughts and comments below. If you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.